strangers and friends and welcome to my first ever tutorial on this channel. This is all very new and I'm sorry if this first one is not perfect but it's going to get better as I get used to it. Also if you're wondering why my face is in there, um, it's because at some point I feel like I will be explaining some things and nothing is going to happen on the screen so it might get a little bit boring. Not that my face is not boring but I don't know. I'm just trying something out guys, so you tell me if it works or not. Again, welcome to this first tutorial. It's going to be about the basics of creating light and shadows in digital painting using Photoshop. So let's get to it! Now before I start talking about light and shadows, I figured I should start by the basics of shapes in general because you need to understand how shapes work before you can make lighting properly just because it's all related to how you're going to be shading them. So for example, if I create two exactly identical rectangles here, we are going to use both of them and create a completely different 3D shape using them. Both of them are going to stay rectangle, but depending on the shading that we are going to do on them, it's going to become something else. So this first one is going to be a half of a cylinder, and this other one is going to be more like a lingot, or I don't know how you pronounce that, I'm sorry. <laughs> So if I take this rectangle right here and try to shade it so that it becomes a simulation of that shape, I'm going to use very very soft shading. Of course I can add to that a layer of highlights like this. The round cylinder is pretty much there. For a sharper or more straight shapes, of course we are going to need to shade it with very very straight shading. And it doesn't really need highlights on the top since it's not round. Where we could have highlights on this one is on the edges here of the corners. So what we did with the shading is that we represented the sides with shading. So both of these sides of the cylinder are what shade we have here on the sides. That's what they represent. And same for this. This side is represented by this, and this side is represented by this. So what started as two identical rectangles from the start is now representing two very different shapes just because of how we shaded it. And that simple exercise is what you should always keep in your mind when you do shading because that's the basic of how everything works and it applies to absolutely everything in digital painting. Once that is understood, we are ready to finally create lighting and shadows. And to practice that, I made a very very simple scene here with basic shapes in front of a window. It's a 3D rendered scene, but the exact same thing that we're going to do can be applied on completely flat shapes from the base of a drawing or a painting. It's just the same thing. So. In this scene, the light obviously comes from the window, that's why I made it that way, because it would make it easier. But still, even if it's a window, the sun can come from different places. So we are going to decide that our sun is going to be right about here. You can put yours wherever you want, of course, that's just where I felt like putting mine. If you're a beginner, I really suggest that you do that. Just drawing lines from your light reference to everything else in your painting. These guys are both going to help for creating the shadows and the highlights in general. Now, the way I like to work is by making different layers for everything that I want to create just because it allows me to delete some of the things that might not work without having to delete everything that I've done. I limited how I'm going to be painting by using masks. It's not something you need to understand then for this tutorial, I'm going to make a different tutorial just on how to use masks in Photoshop. If you don't understand, you don't need to create the masks. It's just that it's going to make it easier for me to show you what I mean by everything that I'm going to explain. So what I do with my layers is that I start super, super simple, super blurry, super big with the brushes. And as we go, we are going to add layers to add more details and add more complexity to the shading. So it's just adding more and more details with every single layer. So if I start by doing the shadows of this cone right here, I'm going to start by using a very big and very blurry brush, so no hardness in there, and very very low opacity. Those are the three things that I will need. So of course if the light comes from here, the shadows is going to be on the other side, like this. 
So that would be my very very simple layer, I would leave it like that, do the same thing on every other shape. So my cube and my sphere. Now I need to do the same on the background. So as long as we are not satisfied with our shadows, what we are going to do is add another layer, reduce the brush size, probably add a little bit of sharpness maybe, maybe not already, and still keep some low opacity of course, and just go with it. Now as for the shadows that are created by the objects on the background and everything, the only thing you need to understand is that how blurry the shadows are depends on the source of light. If it's covered by clouds, it's going to be very very diffuse, like this, and if it's a very very strong sunlight, it's going to be more like this here. So you're going to be about here for this one and of course they don't need to be completely black like this <laughs> that makes more sense so of course we could go on and on and on and add layers and layers to get to a point where we would texture everything just using the shadows of course it's not something that we're going to do with this one I think this is somewhere we kind of could stop just adding layers that's good enough for me and for the practice, so I have four layers on every single object that I have and on my background as well. This number doesn't matter, it doesn't mean anything as I said in the beginning. Now that we did the shadows, the next step is lighting and we should not forget to do it because shadows are not everything. And how are we going to do this? It's the exact same way that we did the shadows. So we start by making something very big, very blurry, very simple and we add layers to add more details and some places that we need to add details in. Making highlights might be something that's a bit harder than to make shadows because deciding where to put the highlights might be hard. Of course the easiest way to put them is in the direction where the light comes from and that makes sense. Um, and that's what I did with my first layer and now what I need to do is to simulate how light works in real life and that's where it gets more complex. Light has the property to bounce off of objects from one to other depending on what surrounds everything. It's called indirect illumination and it's just the way that light bounces um, over objects and it just makes reflection of the color and the light itself. These kinds of things, even if they're more complex, they are what makes a digital painting that much more real in the final look. So that's why I think it's important that I mention it. So for example, if the light hits this cube right there, it's going to bounce off the side of this sphere. Then once you're done with the basics, this is the time where you have fun with everything else so you can simulate rays or just glowing effects or whatever you want to do with it and just have fun with it. Observation is really the key when it comes to simulating light and shadows but these are what I consider as the basics of it in digital painting. Now as for everything else, practice is what makes it work so please try it for yourself and show me what you manage to do with it especially if you're a beginner, I just absolutely love to see what people can do and to help people so just don't be shy to ask questions and just ask for feedbacks I'm really really into that I really really hope this was useful for anybody out there just let me know what worked and what sucked in the comments below so that I can improve for the next tutorials give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed watching this and don't forget to subscribe to my channel I put new art challenge videos every Friday have the absolute lovely essay and I will see you next time bye